I've eaten so many croissants while making this. I'm starting to sweat butter. I am butter. Butter is me. And butter am I. Bonjour, je m'appelle Kiano, and today I'll be making rainbow croissant. I'm comfortable making croissants. I've made colored croissants, pink ones before. So now the challenge is to make one with five colors. So I think it'll be fine. All right. To begin, I'm gonna make the dough. It's very simple. I'm gonna combine some milk and water. So now I'm gonna add in some flour. Dough so you don't scrape the bowls. Don't <laughs> shake the bowl aggressively. And then, really simple, sugar, some instant yeast, salt, and butter. A little crumble here and there. Just to like kind of give it a head start on the mixing. So I'm gonna mix this for about just one minute till it starts becoming a very loose dough and I'll kick it up to level two to really start the kneading a little bit. Oh, that is tight. So what I want is to take 25% of my dough for the color. So this is gonna be for my colored dough. And then with the plane, I'm just gonna shape this into a nice ball and cover it. I'm just gonna let it hang out for two hours. Now I need to divide this into five different parts. So it's not gonna be technically a full rainbow. I don't even know what indigo is. What is indigo? Time for some color. So I'm gonna do these one at a time just so I don't accidentally mix color. First color is going to be pink. Right now it's like kind of like a marble effect, but once it expands, those colors will also help blend together. There's one. It looks like in those sci-fi films where people go in outer space and then they come in contact and then their whole face gets like blue and veiny before they like turn into a monster and then they have to kill them. So right now I'm gonna make one more croissant dough. For this batch, I'm going to use a different brand of dye. These ones are gonna be neon colors. See which one does better. I think a runny gel based color is kind of the money maker because that way you get the best of both worlds. You get a strong color like you would a traditional gel, but you get the spreadability of those more generic water colors. I'm happy with that. That looks good. Great. So I have my five neon colors now. So let's see how these two colors match up so far. They actually look pretty similar. So far I'm leaning towards the neon because these three colors have such a big blue tone. I don't know how distinguished they're gonna be where these three colors have a different undertone. So it's more of a contrast. So you'll see a better rainbow design. I'm just gonna cover them loosely so they can rust and rise and get nice and puffy. And in the meantime, I can have a tea break. So I have the color doughs and they are very squidgy. So I'm gonna start with very little flour for dusting and I'm just gonna shape it with my hands into a very tiny rectangle. Take a little bar of soap. So I'm gonna put this aside while I do the exact same thing to the plain dough. I'm not trying to knead it any further or develop any more gluten right now. I just wanna get into a nice shape so it's easy to work with tomorrow. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my neon colored doughs and then put everything in the fridge. Then tomorrow, that's when I'll actually make the croissants. So it is day two of croissant making. Right now, I'm gonna begin laminating my dough. To roll, I like just giving it a little press and tap to help stretch it out evenly. Let me get out my block of butter. For the butter, I want it chilled, but not so cold where it will break. I like just to pinch my seam together. That way, when I start rolling, my butter won't come spilling out the sides. I'll probably go for like around two feet long. Right now, I'm gonna do a double fold, or known as a book fold. This dough has been hanging out in the freezer for like 10 minutes. So now I'm gonna roll it and fold it one more time before I start adding in the color. Ideally, I should have started rolling the seam side up but I forgot. So that is just under seven inches by six inches. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge for now and then start working on that color dough. These look like gemstones. These are the infinity stones. I found them there in the Tasty Kitchen. So what needs to happen here, this needs to be on top of that. So for now, I need to figure out how to get these on and try to roll these out. Let's see. That could work. Because those are a bit dry, I'm gonna brush it with water to get it to stick. Maybe I can like wrap it around. What is the order of the rainbow? I don't know how I feel about these colors by each other. I don't like the way they look. Well, they're on there. What I'm gonna do is roll this out and then start shaping them into 
you know, to the croissant. Yeah, this is hard to like roll each color, same thickness. But I'm not as concerned with like the mixing because that marbling is really, really minimal right now. So I'm gonna cut them into triangles. I'm gonna use my handy ruler for guidance and use a pizza cutter. This is a cool tool. It's not just good for pizza. So what I wanna do is slightly stretch down that point just so it'll help me close that letter. You can tack it down if it makes it easier. And then I'm start rolling, keeping it quite tight. This looks not cute. <laughs> They're so ugly. I'm gonna come back and do my neon ones and hopefully they look more pleasing to the eye. So for this one, I'm gonna make a color sheet. I'm gonna shape these all into little logs and lay out all the colors and then kind of like roll it out. The goal is to make these five tiny pieces of dough become one. I'm gonna brush off the side that's gonna stick so I don't have extra flour and just lay that right on top. I'm curious if it's easier to roll belly side down. Cause with the first one, these middle colors really got stretched out and I was losing my pink and purple. So I'm wondering if I roll it with the colors down if that'll help control the stretch. Oh yeah, that's so much more even. Now I'm going to cut them into the triangles and then same thing, I'm gonna roll them. When you're rolling, you don't wanna crush them. You just want it to be tight, but still gentle. You know what they also look like? Tops. Yes, little spinny tops. So they have been baked. I have batch number one, I have batch number two. With batch one, I can tell even the middle layers, there's some breakage between the two colors, which I kind of expected. Surprisingly, these colors are a lot bolder, but it's what's on the inside that counts. So I'm gonna cut one of each open and compare it so I can decide which color I wanna go ahead with. Huh, that's so interesting. I only can see three colors really. Why is that? Okay, that looks a lot better. Whatever color I have on the outside isn't gonna show on the inside. Well, this is gonna be fun. Here we are, croissant making day three. I am going to make a brand new batch of dough. Last time I did five rows of color and then only three made it inside. So I'm gonna double up my rows and then ideally everything will make it inside. Oops, 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 oops. What are the colors of the rainbow? I don't know, I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> I'm just gonna add, yeah, let's say, three drops. Oh, that is not a drop. It's more like a squidge. Last time I was getting like all nouveau with my coloring. I just feel like going red, orange, green, blue, violet seems right. These will hang out in the fridge overnight. Hopefully develop a little bit more in color, particularly our friends blue, green, and purple. And I'll see them in the morning. So today is day two of my new batch. So the dough this time is a little bit more narrow just so I can make my triangles a bit shorter. The last time I felt like they were getting a little bit long so I want a shorter croissant to roll up. So yeah, I'm just gonna get going on laminating. The key is keep the butter from mixing with the dough so you have layers. Butter mix, no layer, no layer, no croissant. Everyone fails. So I got my colors. What I'm gonna do this time, instead of like rolling them out, as whole strips, I'm gonna take each one, cut it in half. So I'm gonna start with my red. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for all the colors. I have each color divided into two parts now, and I'm going to build the rainbow once, and then build it again. Okay, look at that. I'm telling you, if this is not guarantee all the colors inside, it's just not possible. I need to pinchy pinch to bind them all together, because it needs to be one. I'm just gonna help smush them together. This needs to be one inch larger than my plain dough. That way it's not only covering the top, but around the sides as well. And I just have to focus on rolling wider, not longer, and all will be well. Wait, hold up. Did I just roll this the wrong way? Oh, fuck. Holy bejeez. I done thought I ruined it, but Alex says it's not ruined forever. So they're all rolled, and now they have to do their thing and prove they've already started proving. And then I'll brush them with eggs and pop them in the oven and croissants will be ready. Well, they're not the best ones I've ever made. But one thing I can do with this batch is figure out if I have more color on the inside. Hey, okay, yeah, yeah. All the colors are in there. Tomorrow, I'll make another batch, take my time and do it right, and then they'll be done. So another day, another croissant. Yesterday's batch 
wasn't the best. I think today is going to be great. So when making croissants, if I don't keep everything nice and cold, it'll start proving. And the stage I really want the dough to prove is after they're shaped because it took time because they rolled it the wrong way and I'm filming so you have hot lights all over it. It started proving way quicker than I needed it to. So by the time they got in the oven, they kind of hit their peak. So they didn't get any bigger. This croissant dough needs to be short and wide. Therefore, I need to make my color strips thin and long. So when I place it on top of my white dough, everything will match up fine and all will be well. Cool, that is dope. In order to not mess this up, I wanna make it wide this way. So I'm just gonna give it a little roll. I'ma have this homeboy chill out in the corner over here. Everything seems to be behaving well, staying cold. It's also earlier in the day, so everything is a lot cooler. Nothing is proving right now. This is my rested, chilled dough. So now I can roll it out a little bit thinner without having my butter sloshing around. Right now, it's a little bit stressed, and in the real world, I would let it rest in the fridge or freezer for a half hour, one hour. But we need to get some shots done, so I'm gonna cut them a little bit wider than I normally was. Ideally, they'd be three inches wide. I'm gonna do four inches, so when they shrink, they'll be at the perfect size. So they're sticking around three inches, which is the goal number, and they are 12 inches long. So yeah, size-wise, they are looking good. Look how cute they are. It's time for all the magic to happen. I'm gonna cover it and leave it at room temperature for a couple hours. If I feel like they're not proving quick enough, I can pop them in the oven with some warm water in the bottom and I'll help speed up that proving process. Look at them, so floofy. It's incredible like what a couple of hours can do. So all I need to do is egg wash them, pop it in the oven, and then we have rainbow croissants. Yeah. Just have to wait from the cool and then I can I am quite content because they look nice and they don't look like trash, more importantly, because yesterday's looked like garbage. It's time to dissect it now. Hear that crunch. Whoa. It's hella colors. Gosh, I feel like every time I bake, it's the exact same lesson. Patience, practice makes perfect. It's kind of always it. And filming ruins cooking. And those are just facts. Truth of tasty. So cute, I really want to keep this one forever. I actually might. 